Can you make a show-stopping chicken dish at home? The answer is yes, and its name is Coco Van, and that is what we're cooking today. Just look at it, and you are gonna love it. Let's go. Here's another weekend dish for you. When I bought my first cookbook 35 years ago, I decided to buy Mastering the Art of French Cooking by Julia Child. And I don't know if you can see this, but this thing has taken a beating. And Coco Van was the very first elaborate dish that I made. I was 21 years old, away at college, and I wowed my friends. And since then, I was hooked on French cooking and French techniques. The name Coco Van literally means rooster in wine. And that may sound weird, but uh, some of us in Latin countries, we eat hen, which is just an older chicken. Typically, older chickens need to brace for a long time because the meat, it's tougher. In today's world, the average chicken we eat is between one to two months old. And roosters may live uh, from five to eight years. So some adjustments have been made to this old recipe because of that. The chicken is marinated in wine overnight, and the wine is doing two things. It imparts a lot of flavor, and it helps tenderize the meat as well. In this recipe, we only use it for flavor. Cooking is always about ingredients, time, and temperature. And in this dish, there are two main ingredients, the chicken and the wine. We're using a company called Bell and Evans that you can find at Whole Foods. They have great chicken. And for the wine, you wanna use a red wine from Burgundy. This dish actually originated in the area of Dijon, famous for the mustard, in Burgundy. In researching this dish, I stumbled into a very famous French chef, the late, great Paul Bocuse, saying that he prefers to use Beaujolais, which is a type of wine from the southern part of Burgundy. So I'm going with that. Man, I can't wait. Let's cook. First, we're gonna get organized. The French call this mise en place, and all mise en place is, is having all the ingredients and the tools that you need right in front of you. Okay, so we're ready to cook. My conga line is ready. The conga line here is very important because this is a dish that has a lot of ingredients in very specific steps. So the conga line helps us follow them. The first thing we're gonna do is render some bacon. And this is important. Bacon in the US is smoked. Bacon in France is not always smoked. This is a fun fact for you. Bacon and lard are both French words. They were adopted by the English about a thousand years ago in one of those occupation times, during wars and things like that. 
So it's important to find bacon that is not smoked. Sometimes that's not easy to find. I was able to find it in Whole Foods, but if you cannot find it, use pancetta. You can find that at Publix, and that's the Italian equivalent of unsmoked bacon. We're using medium heat here. Take out the render bacon. Brown the chicken in that. Already seasoned this chicken before I marinated. I did show you that, so I'm not gonna season again. I wanna hear that sound. One important thing is that for all this chicken you see here, this is probably gonna be three batches. You do not wanna overcrowd the chicken on the pot because then it will not brown, it will just steam. Also, all the sugar in the wine is gonna help caramelize the chicken. So you're gonna see it's gonna be a very deep brown color. So it's time to turn. We're gonna do the same with every piece of chicken. Okay, the chicken is brown. Now we're adding the onion and carrot. And we also add the mushrooms. We're gonna brown these for about six to eight minutes, something like that. We're gonna add salt and pepper. I decided midway to wear an, ap an apron, the one that was given to me by my sister-in-law, Wendy, because this thing splatter and I don't wanna ruin my shirt. Add the garlic and the tomato paste. And we'll cook that for about a minute. So we're gonna add the chicken. That sound is the juices. We're gonna add the onion, the pearl onion, and half of the bacon. We're gonna turn off the heat and we're gonna add the cognac and flambe. I think I'm gonna turn the slide off to see if you can see the show if it happens. Sometimes it doesn't ignite, but most of the time, it will. And we're using this lighter. <laughs> there we go. If that ever becomes a problem for you after you do it, all you need to do is put on the lid and it will immediately shut itself off. What you do not want to do is add water. If you add water, it will be a hot mess. So we added brandy because I didn't have any cognac. Cognac is a type of brandy that is made in France in a region for a place called cognac. Look at me, I'm like the guy from Hawaii playing with fire. Light back on. Oh, this is so fragrant right now. And what that did also is deglaze the pan. All those little bits and pieces of goodness that get stuck to the pan. The French call that fond. You want all of that in your sauce. The heat back on. So we add the reduced wine. And we're gonna add enough chicken stock just to cover the chicken. We're gonna add something the French call a bouquet garni. The basic one is parsley with the stems, bay leaf, and thyme. You tie it together with butcher's twine. I included it in the marinade, that's why the twine looks burgundy. You do it like this so you can just pull it out. It doesn't have to show up in the final dish. It's important for this recipe to use a Dutch oven or some sort of heavy pot that has a heavy lid. You can do it here stovetop or you can use the oven at maybe 325 degrees because you want to be low to medium low. We're going to cover, lower the heat and let it simmer for about an hour. So while this is cooking, let's do shout outs. These are the people that are cooking our food, taking pictures and letting us know about it. You should try that too. Joseph Balero did it again. He did the salmon and he told me that his 97 year old mom could not believe that he pulled that off. Great job, Joseph. Luis Saher also did the salmon. Chris Kowalski did the chicken steak. Kathy Briseño did the chicken steak again. And Kiriana, little sis from Spain, she did the steak with the pan sauce. We are so excited to see you cooking our food. It inspires us to do more. Okay, it's been about an hour. 
and we're gonna check that the chicken is tender, and I'm sure it is, and we're just gonna take it out of the sauce, put it on a plate, and then reduce the sauce. Chicken is very tender. We're also taking out the bouquet garni. So meanwhile, we're gonna do something the French call beurre manier, which translates to kneaded butter. It's literally a dough. It's made of equal parts room temperature butter and all-purpose flour mixed together. I'm gonna do it over here and then I'll show you what it looks like. And this is what it looks like. We're gonna use this as a thickening agent for the sauce. You're gonna cook that in there for five to 10 minutes. We're gonna discard the bouquet garni and cover the chicken while the sauce is reducing. Meanwhile, we're gonna cook a white rice. Being from South America, anything that has sauce like this, I think immediately rice. But you can use any kind of potato, roasted potato. I think mashed potato would be also great with this gravy. The sauce has reduced to about half. You want it to lightly coat the spoon like this and you make a line that's called coating the spoon or nappe in French. That means that that's the consistency you want for your sauce. Taste for seasoning, always. Mm. Doesn't need anything. So the chicken goes back in there. Be careful with the meat, because the chicken is very tender right now. Put back this juice. While the sauce was reducing, I took out some of the loose onions from the big pieces. You don't have to do this, but it's better for presentation. We're gonna add the remainder bacon, right on top, and about half of this parsley. Cover it and let it warm up for about five minutes. Finally, taste test. Man, doesn't this look delicious? I don't know if I can get close enough. I don't want the sauce to spill over, but it's just fantastic. Mmm, smells so good. No, by the way, I did use chicken thighs and chicken legs because they remain moist if you cook them for a long time. Mm. Oh wow, let me have a mushroom here. Oh man, I mean this sauce is so rich and so complex. You can taste the wine, you can taste all these different components here. Mm. Let me try it with the rice. This sauce is perfect for rice. Perfection. Mm. Today, we're drinking this not with the burgundy, but a wine that I had here at home is called Chateau Neuf de Pap, which literally means the new castle of the Pope. This is from Cot de Rhone, which is south of Burgundy. And Chateau Neuf de Pap is just north of the city of Avignon. And the Catholic Pope lived there for 400 years. That's why the reference to the Pope. This is a great wine. It's not a budget wine, but I found it for $32 at Costco. Pretty good buy. Joanna, come and taste. mouth so good it is really so good. tasty i wish you guys could taste what we're tasting amazing wow this is dangerous because you can eat so much of this those of us who watch the carbs ah. very dangerous <laughs> i watch the carbs before i eat them look at them oh i look at them mm. oh my gosh this is so good my daughter isa has been waiting for this for days isa you're gonna love it your friends are gonna love it it's gonna be amazing mm. take it with the wine and see so good the flavor and it wasn't long really it was done quickly yes yeah, about an hour and the prep it's about half an hour you can do that the day before i actually did it the day before mm -hmm. and just put it in the fridge the wine works perfect with it right this wine is so good let me try it. you could bathe in this sauce so good we've been doing a lot of sauces lately very saucy mm. Mm. mushrooms yum mm. so good you cannot skip the rice mm. Mm. So that's my contribution to the shows. When you see white rice, I made it. You, you saw a little bit of our hands doing it. Very mm. simple. The recipe is there. How about these glasses? We've had this for, I would say, over 20 years. <laughs> they are Cheers. magnificent. Cheers. Mm. For a French wine, French recipe. I think it's fabulous. Mm. Perfect. This is another one for the ages. You need to try this one. Believe me, your family is just gonna love it. As always, four things. Subscribe, hit like, share with your friends, 
and cook it. You have to practice, you have to try it, you have to do it. Make different things. I promise you, you will not regret it. Take a picture, send it to me so we can give you a shout out on the show. You're gonna be glad you did. So what are we cooking next week? Oh, next week. We are cooking a fisherman stew called Chopino. Mmm, it's so delicious. It's actually Sebastian's favorite. Come back and see us. Cheers. <laughs>